know the ice time quote that the, anyone who has <laughs> never made mistake has never tried anything new. So let me start with that. And uh, so we have to work hard, uh, uh, you know, uh, to get good results. It doesn't matter if it is positive or negative. If you work hard, uh, maybe long, most of the time you get uh, you make mistakes, but you learn lessons. So and through that, so let me start my uh, presentation. We looked at the uh, you know the natural product research uh, in the last 34 years. Uh, so we know that natural product continues to play a high significant role in the drug discovery and development process. And if you look at this graph, uh, you see that all these are from the drugs developed and uh, uh, in approved drugs for, from natural product. It is stated that more than, uh, you know, the half, 50% of the drugs introduced last 34 years from natural product or derivatives of natural product. So then we have we can't forget it. So we have to go with the natural product because the structure and also the diversity, uh, you know, those are the things that are very important. So therefore, we have to stay with live with natural products. And uh, if you look at the history of the natural product, and you see that the more uh, natural product that uh, you know the those are the secondary metabolites. We know that the natural product we. Uh, when we deal with that product, we are very really concerning on uh, secondary metabolites, and they are very successful in developing drugs. And also, they give the lead compound, and uh, to make na different type of or develop the different type of drugs. And uh, implementation of the drug discovery and development that has shown, uh, you know, in this uh, graph from for last 34 years. You can see that the, uh, you know the, there's a decline from this uh, era. <coughs> that means from uh, year 2000 to like 2011, the production of drugs from or the uh, development of drugs this, uh, and discovery of drugs is yeah, like you know the very low when compared to the early uh, 20th century. So. And why we have to, uh, you know, the look for <coughs> new compound? So the demand for new and safe bio uh, bioactive compound from natural pro products is, uh, you know, the very. Uh, it's a, it's, it's, it has a, you know, the we, we are for. It is like we are forced to uh, search for new compound. Why? Because emergence of new diseases and also development of new uh, drug resistant to pathogenic bacteria and uh, development of new toxic pathogenic microorganism that you know the because of those things we have to look at the you know the new uh, drugs uh, and new uh, also uh, by looking at the natural product <coughs> com novel natural product compound we have to synthesize or uh, you know the we have to uh, develop, th th those are lead compound, can be considered as lead compound, and then you can be used in this dance discovery uh, program. And uh, we know that if you look at the structures of natural product uh, that have been isolated so far, they, are, they have unique structure, that structure nobody can, you know, the design, is the nature gave to us, right? So therefore, the structural diversity and also that present opportunities for discovering uh, mainly now is low molecular, that means the small molecule uh, lead compound. That is very, very important. How are we going to isolate small molecule lead compound? So it is, so it is reported that like less than 10% of the world, uh, you know, the diver biodiversity has been utilized so far. Uh, to get, uh, isolate, uh, you know, the biological active compound, and uh, so the, the more like ninety percent left and left for us. We have to uh, like do more research and uh, you know the isolate new novel bioactive compound with diverse chemical structures. So this map 
So what are those red patterns? We know that uh, it has been shown that there are 25 uh, biodiver biodiversity hotspots in the world. So I, I'm very proud to say that we are among one of them. Sri Lanka is one of the biodiversity <coughs> hotspots. We have not touched most of the uh, sources of uh, you know, the natural product. Therefore, many drugs were discovered from natural product and they are, uh, you know, the complex factor into many chemists and uh, due to this, uh, you know, the synthesis of them uh, is a great challenge. It's not easy. If you look at the structures of these natural products, they have many stereo centers. And if you can't get this, when you do the synthesis, if you can't get the same stereo chemistry, then they are not bioactive. This is why, uh, you know, the natural products are really uh, important in the drug discovery. So this shows you, this slide shows you the sources of new pharmaceuticals. There are many sources, like, you know, the chemical synthesis, uh, computational uh, chemistry, and virtuous compound, biopharmaceuticals. There are many ways that we can, you know, the, obtain lead compounds. But I still feel the natural product play, uh, you know, the big role in the drug discovery and de development, because that gives you ideas. Maybe that not an exact drug that you can develop, but that gives you the idea, uh, you know, to design a drug because of the structural diversity. And what are the sources? We know that most of us involved in isolating uh, natural products from uh, plants, and also, uh, you know, the uh, many plants uh, available in Sri Lanka, we have seen that they show, they contain bioactive compounds, but they, other than that, there are many uh, macrophagi, right? and also micro, uh, you know, the microfungi, and other than that, I would en highlight the endophytic fungi, and also marine invertebrate. In Sri Lanka, we don't do many research in, in marine invertebrate, and also uh, uh, endolichenic fungi. I will explain that, uh, you know, the, what research has been done in, like, you know, the, in, uh, in Sri Lanka contest that in, uh, about this uh, endophytic and endolichenic fungi. And how are we going to search for lead compound? What is lead compound? That in the structure that has same activity against sugar, you have to identify the target, right? And the chosen target, but it is not good to fit, uh, develop as a drug. So therefore we can modify by looking at the structure and then uh, this is why we look for, search for, uh, you know, uh, lead compound. How are we going to do that? Many sources as I told you, Maybe microbes, maybe marine world, maybe uh, you know the animals, uh, but and also uh, plants. And uh, you know the most of us we know that in Sri Lanka, traditional medicine practices, and also if you go back to the past, uh, and uh, whatever the uh, you know the drugs already been introduced, right? The based on traditional me medicine pra medicinal practices. Uh, and they have informed the basis for the early medicine that have been already identified and in 19th century there are many uh, you know the uh, medicine uh, or drug discovered example isolation of morphine atropine caffeine cocaine these are some of the you know the bioactive compound isolated uh, from plants and if I just remind you very quickly, uh, some my, uh, you know, the milestone in drug discovery. I start from the smallest molecule, discovery of aspirin. You know that this is, uh, first, it was isolated from below bark, and as not aspirin, that was salicin. And uh, so, because the bark of salicin was used for pork medicine to, re you know, the remedy the weaver, and uh, then they found this salicin has a lot of side effects. Then the pharmaceutical company, they uh, synthesized derivatives by looking at this small molecule. So it is just the ester, es, es, uh, esterification here, the hydrolysis of that, you know, give you a small molecule, small phenolic compound, and they make different type of, you know, derivative. One of them, the derivative prepared from salicylic acid, they you know, the 
prepared with acetyl salicylic acid still be used as aspirin. This is how the aspirin uh, in your know, invented. And also the second uh, well-known example, you know, the uh, isolation of morphine. And uh, we know that the plant is the poppy plant or the papaya soft liver. Many alkaloids are present in that. It's a toxic, and but the, but it has been used for many, uh, you know, the cure many diseases and uh, you know the uh, fever, diarrhea, and also cough suppression. So and then the they are, they found that the most active uh, bioactive compound is morphine, and later on. Uh, you know, the, once they do, did the stuff to elucidation of uh, morphine, and then they prepared, uh, you know, the derivatives. What they did, the one successful uh, story is the acetylation of these two hydroxyl group, and what they got is heroin. And it was, a, it, it has better activity than, uh, you know, the uh, morphine as a painkiller, and, but Unfortunately, it is it becomes a uh, abuse drug today, and uh, this is this is how the morph this is the morphine, and this is how the very simple uh, you know the synthesis is just add acetic anhydride uh, <coughs> and uh, you know uh, heat it so you get the acetylation of these two hydroxyl group and show the uh, very high activity. And what happened today? Uh, we know that it is an abuse drug in Af Afghanistan. What they do is they, you know, the collect through opium and then, you know, the, they extract morphine uh, using this simple technique. And uh, what they do is, and in the villages, they add acetic anhydride in barrels and so, and they make uh, heroin. So it become an abuse drug, but although it has this high activity than the morphine. And not another important, uh, you know, the discovery. Look at this, uh, you know, the imp, uh, this is a, uh, you know, the natural product that is uh, digitoxin. Uh, it has been used to, uh, you know, the use for heart diseases and isolated from digitalis purpurae. So it's called Fox glove, and it is another uh, in great invention in the natural product history. And also uh, alkaloid. This is people belong to topane alkaloid, piscosine, and uh, uh, you know the not only for uh, infective diseases, uh, natural product used for neurogenerative diseases. This is, uh, uh, you know, the inhibitor of acetylcholine receptor. Uh, and this plant is, uh, you know, the, uh, very toxic. But when used in small quantities, uh, you know, it is a medicine. So this is how they get to know that indigenous knowledge and, you know, the, although it is toxic, but the, they isolated the active compound and then found, uh, you know, the, this uh, digital uh, histocene can be used, to, uh, you know, the, and developed as a uh, drug uh, to cure different type of, uh, you know, the disease. Another uh, great invention in natural product chemistry, you know, the cancer, anti, uh, searching for anti-cancer compound is, uh, you know, the, it's a it's real need now because we know the number of cancer patients increase all over the world, not only in Sri Lanka. So, and uh, you know, the isolation of taxol from new bark. And uh, so that, that produce the, uh, this is the yew tree, and bark of yew tree was used to isolate this uh, compound. You can see the, the structure, uh, smacy, and it is used for chemotherapy, still uh, is a active drug, uh, anti-cancer drug, and it is used for breast cancer, ovarian cancer, so, and uh, also the mechanism of action of this, uh, you know, drug that have been uh, studied very well, and it was found that the, it uh, blocked the mitosis, uh, is blocked by this uh, taxol, and this is uh, in the cancer cells, and this is why, uh, you know, that, that suppress the uh, cell division of, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, cancer cells. And uh, not only that, once the molecule is identified, once the uh, structure is well known with the stereochemistry, then organic, synthetic organic chemists can, ma you know, they play a major role because most of the time we can't, you know, the from if we, if the natural product is the main source, 
that means that when develop as a drug, the, we can't meet, uh, you know, meet the demand. So therefore, the synthesis is the other alternative. This has been synthesized successfully, and uh, uh, you know, using this retrosynthesis uh, analysis, and it is synthesized, and now drug is available in the market, commercialized, and available in the market. And another important discovery uh, of anti-cancer drug development is from uh, Catalansis rosius. You know that uh, uh, in, it's also called Vinca rosia and in Christine, in Blastine, these are the two major components isolated from uh, you know, uh, this plant uh, other than the two, two other com minor compounds and they were also used Initially, the, this plant was used as a herbal medicine. This is how you know, the, uh, the uh, scientists get to know the uh, medicinal value of this plant. And then these two components were isolated and found they are very active. And also, mode of action of these two compounds were you know, studied and found that the molecule uh, you know, the, this molecule to vinblastine and vincristine, we call commonly vinca alkaloids, uh, th that the tubing molecule which are formed that fail to polymerize, this is why cell division is disturbed. Another herbal, uh, you know, the plant which, uh, you know, the produce a uh, lot of bioactive compound is the ashwagandha, we call the, you know, the Vitania somnifera. So it is uh, native to India, but it, it we have in Sri Lanka too. It produces a lot of, uh, you know, terpene, uh, steroidal compound, and they are COX-2 inhibitors. We know that COX-2, in, uh, you know, enzyme, that's the cyclooxygenase enzyme, are the, uh, responsible for production of inflammatory compound. So that lead to the arthritis, so the pain, joint pain. So therefore, to when develop new drugs for arthritis, we always look for COX-1 and 2 inhibitors. So these compounds have been identified as co COX-2 enzymes, and still scientists working on this plant. Although these, you know, the uh, compounds are well known, try to develop in the as the drug and in the drug discovery program. And not only that. So because the you know the plant the availability is limited. Therefore, uh, you know, the, uh, and also the plant is uh, limited in the tropical countries, the other countries like European countries and also USA, they, what they have done is they have hydroponically grown this uh, Vitania somnifera. They have found that with the extract of this plant, you know, that have with high, that contain high ratio of this compound than the normally grown plant. So therefore, the, this, without disturbing the biodiversity, the compound can be extracted. And uh, another class of natural product is the, you know, the, is, uh, this belongs to coumarin, and uh, you know, uh, the from the uh, plant, this, uh, you know, the defective odorata. So they have isolated this coumarin de derivative, that rod, which has been identified as the anticoagulant. And it's another discovery of, uh, you know, the natural product. So, and uh, if you look at the uh, natural product drugs already being approved and available in the market, this, the graph from 1981 to 2014, this is how, you know, the uh, percentage of uh, drugs that are produced, approved over 34 years. And, well, you know, this, in the like 90, 90, 20th century, and uh, uh, we found, and also early 21st century, so there was a big uh, demand, and also the more researchers involved in uh, natural product uh, drug discovery, but you know, it's uh, declined in 13, uh, 2013 to 2014. So, indicating uh, that we need to do more research on natural product chemistry to isolate bioactive compounds. And also, this gives you the, the uh, approved drug, uh, small molecule anti-infective uh, drugs, which are isolated from 2011 to 14. So that the, uh, the researchers were more involved in isolating antibacterial compounds, that's are from natural products or natural product derivatives. And uh, also, uh, you know, the C. 
synthetic uh, drugs uh, compared to the uh, you know uh, natural product and natural product derivatives is uh, you know the like 50 50 so uh, this is only for uh, you know the anti infective drugs uh, but uh, still we need to search for more new uh, you know the uh, structural component new new classes of natural product in order to combat the uh, you know the infection so these are examples for some of the antibacterial agents that are identified from uh, 2011 to 2014. There are nine small molecule uh, antibacterial drugs were approved, but uh, and uh, uh, you know the, the but development into drug and drug this uh, development as a drug and also uh, you know the uh, commercialization is the biggest problem. So therefore, we have to do more collaborative work. Not uh, you know, the just a natural product uh, chemist cannot uh, you know the go alone. They have to have the joint hand with the other uh, collaborators, like you know the co uh, uh, how to develop uh, up to the development of a drug. So these are some examples, and also this is another new compound which has been approved but not yet come to the market because of the uh, challenges that has to pay. Uh, you know the uh, phase uh, in the uh, during the process of drug development, and also anti-cancer drugs. If you look at, uh, you know, from 2011 to 2014, we know that Taxol played a major role, and also the use in nanotechnology. Uh, you know, they developed new drugs into the market. Uh, that is one in the 2014, and also two uh, plant-derived. Uh, uh, you know the drugs were introduced. These are the two, uh, you know, the plant uh, derived anti-cancer drugs introduced uh, uh, or approved by the FDA. Uh, but, uh, may, you know, the, there are a lot to do to develop and commercial, uh, make a commercialized uh, product. So this is uh, exam the example for small molecule anti-diabetic drugs which are, uh, you know, the, uh, approved by FDA for last four years, 2011 to 2014, uh, many identification done. And also I'd like to remind you, and the same, the drug as well as nutraceuticals are also important equally. Uh, we have to work on that. So because this is one example, uh, you know, that this plant, stevia species, and which produce uh, artificial sweetener. Uh, it is used in as a artificial sweetener, uh, mainly the diabetic patient. Due to the presence of this stereocyte uh, and uh, you know the derivative of that, uh, and uh, the the reason why because it is shown that this compound suicide uh, you know the has uh, it is uh, the they have measured the uh, uh, the strength of the uh, you know the sweeten and found that 300 times sweeter than the uh, normal uh, table sugar. So therefore, that it is, uh, and also it shows other, uh, you know, benefits like it is not, it has zero calorie and it is heat stable and also non-fermentable. Uh, therefore, and also they were able to, after discovery of this uh, stewicide and the total synthesis of this molecule have been done. Therefore, and also we know that sucralose is another. Uh, zero calorie, uh, you know, the alternative uh, sweetener available and aspartame, they have a lot of side effects. Therefore, now uh, has less demand for that and new, uh, you know, the plant uh, uh, derived compound has been identified and now commercialized and many are now using this one to make a lot of diet food. And that now I'm moving to the, so what I'm talking to you is like, you know, the, the how that plant, uh, you know, natural product, uh, you know, the uh, involved in the drug discovery and drug development programs. So I'll move to the fungal metabolites. Uh, we know that uh, fungi play, uh, you know, the important, that's an important source of novel antimicrobial uh, bioactive compounds. And uh, the first milestone in the field of, uh, that was a great innovation in the fungal uh, secondary metabolite uh, because the, uh, you know, Alex Tender Fleming's isolated uh, the uh, penicillin. It was a, it's a co it was a coincidence. He's, he was a uh, bacteriologist 
but when he was working in the lab, he found that a stranger in his bacteria played. And then he didn't ignore that. What he did is he isolated that and grew separately and looked at why the bacteria can't go in the presence of this organism. This is how the invention of penicillin uh, took place. And uh, so with that, uh, you know, the, that became a new era for bioactive natural product from microbes. So the, because, uh, you know, before that, uh, you know, nobody paid as attention for fungal uh, secondary metabolites. And after the invention of uh, penicillin, many uh, scientists, natural product chemists, did, and also work with the micro, microbiologists and molecular biologists and try to collect microorganisms and uh, make great discoveries of the, uh, you know, the natural product chemistry. And uh, it, the exploration of microbial diversity has been encouraged by the fact that the uh, microbes are essential for sustainable development of the pharmaceutical industry. So then, because of that reason, many discoveries take place. One good example is the Nobel laureate, Selman Bokman. He got the uh, Nobel Prize for the isolation of streptomycin that the, he was working with the, he, the uh, working with the uh, you know the bugs in the uh, dirt microorganism isolating the microorganism in the dirt and he found this streptomyces disease that the <coughs> produced this uh, you know the bioactive compound and it's uh, uh, developed as a uh, you know the antibiotic like that not only for antibiotics the microorganisms help to make you know, they develop anti-inflammatory compound, anti-cancer, antibiotic, and many agrochemicals, immunosuppressant, anti-parasites like that. The vast range of, you know, the uh, diseases and also help to, uh, you know, the remedy health problem uh, in the society. And the other important of the discovery of bioactive compound from fungi, because not like the plants, because the fungi, you know, the, we can save the fungi and then again reuse them. The pure cultures you can save and reuse using fermentation method or using solid cultures. Therefore, without disturbing the biodiversity of the uh, world, we can uh, isolate, uh, you know, a lot, lot of certain metabolites. So these are few examples, you know, that the other than the penicillin, other than penicillin, uh, you know, we all know about the cephalosporin, erythromycin, common antibiotic. So available in the uh, market these days, uh, they are all from, uh, in isolated from microorganisms, fungi. And not only that, we all know the lower statin, metastatin, cholesterol lowering drugs. They are also first isolated from uh, fungi and now developed and available in the market. Therefore, the microorganism plays a major role in the drug discovery now. So if you look at the fungi, it's another world. And you, you see the microfungi and also, uh, you know, the macrofungi. So you can use any of them to isolate, you know, different type of compound. So, and I would like to now the, spend the rest of my speech to uh, tell you that how this uh, bioactive uh, screening of my bioactive compound from this uh, fungal metabol fungi because I have done a lot of work like last 10 years working with microorganisms and isolated different type of uh, you know the bioactive compound so I like to share my experience that how did I work with uh, you know these fungal uh, uh, strains and isolate the compound so the this, if you look at the screening of bioactive compounds from fungal metabolite, there are two ways. We can either you go for liquid culture or you can use, uh, you know, the solid culture. And so we, it depends, it, it's the experience that you have to work with them and also collaborate with microbiologists. So then we can learn a lot of, you know, the uh, rather than work, chemists working along, that the collaboration strengthens the natural product research. 
Yeah, so I work with uh, you know the uh, microbiologists uh, and also botanists uh, in order to isolate these uh, you know the uh, fungi from uh, different uh, sources. And uh, then the, you get the extract, and then you have to identify the correct isolation technique. Maybe uh, you know the sophisticated method like HPLC, preparative HPLC, or you can go for the normal column chromatography in order to identify small molecules, natural products. And then the finally you have to do the uh, you know the identification that is maybe NMR or LCMS and if your compound is volatile then you can go you have to go for uh, GCMS to uh, you know the identify the uh, bioactive compound which is very very important the correct identification with the correct stereochemistry. So what type of fungi available and can you know the available and we can work with. So there are mainly uh, you know the endophytic fungi <laughs> That is the fungi which stay in uh, you know the plant tissues. We don't see any symptoms. They are not pathogenic. They just live in uh, plant tissues. They are called uh, endophytic fungi. And also rhizosphere fungi. That means the rhizosphere. That means the the you know the area around the roots, not inside the roots. Just the uh, the rhizosphere means the very closely. Uh, uh, if you take the you know the root surface and the lot of microorganisms live there. So the, those uh, microorganisms can be isolated and they produce second metabolite and see the bioactivity and endolichenic fungi. So that's the, the lichen. We know that lot of lichens are available. And I work with the lichens and then I know that the lichen also, the thalli of lichen has sort of, there are many fungi live in the lichen thalli and the same way as the, the fungi that live in the plant thalli. So they were named as endolichenic fungi and found that these, uh, you know, the fungi can produce uh, secondary metabolites with novel, uh, you know, the bioactivity. And we're moving to endophytic fungi. So it is shown that different type of microorganisms are present. And out of that, the fungi play the major role other than the other because uh, if you go through the literature, the many fungi, uh, uh, you know, they have been isolated and they produce novel bioactive compound and novel classes of natural product. So therefore, pe now many scientists involving endophytic fungi rather than endophytic fungi, uh, bacteria or other microbial species. And uh, what great invention. We know that u uh, you know, the, the taxol was isolated from u but, you know, the, before it was synthesized, the, you know, the scientists were struggling to isolate taxol and uh, because the, it, was, it was very active for uh, cancer and uh, then the, the microbiologists also involved in this process and they found, uh, you know, the bark of the u uh, you know the endophytic fungi were present. One novel, you know the fungus, Taxomyces andriana, can produce taxol, and the taxol was isolated from, uh, you know the that fungus, and they found that there's the same stereochemistry, same structure, and uh, you know uh, same activity. So then the, this this they, therefore, uh, you know the sum of the. Uh, bioactive compound with novel structures isolated from plant and found that the fungi, endophytic fungi can produce the same, uh, you know, uh, compound. So that was another, uh, you know, the important discovery in, uh, you know, the drug, uh, drug discovery program. And uh, if I go to my work that I have done uh, in last, uh, you know, the few years, uh, so I work with endophytic fungus. Uh, which was isolated from Mormon tree. This is Ketomium chiversi, and it was first grown in the, you know, the, the PDA, that is potato destrox agar, and found that the major constituent present is threads gold. You may heard of this compound. It is a HSP90 inhibitor. You know that the cancer cells 
produce this protein in the you know the large amount. So therefore, the uh, if we f can find the you know the HSP ninety inhibitor, it's a one target. So and also it is cytotoxic for uh, cancer uh, cells. So this is uh, the radicicol was isolated from this uh, fungus, Ketomium chiversi. And not only that, there were few other compounds present, two uh, new isocumarines, they were named as uh, ketochiversin A and ketochiversin B, and also three non chromons uh, isolated. And uh, so, out of that, the, you know, the radicicol the, the, was the major constituent which was isolated from this endophytic fungi. And uh, the behavior of it is, it, uh, so I initially mentioned that we have to collaborate with my, you know, the microbiologists because they also, they have a broad idea about how these microbes behave. Their behavior is totally different in different climates, different substrate, and also uh, when you change the, you know, the culture medium, their behavior is different and they produce different type of secondary metabolites. So one good, uh, you know, the example, so we work with this ketomium tuversi, same, uh, you know, the endophytic fungus, and when it was grown in uh, solid medium, it was the, the major constituent was radicicol and identified as a HSP-90 inhibitor, but we, uh, you know, the grow that one in liquid medium, PDB, potato dextrose broth medium, so we found this totally different compound was synthesized, and it was named as keto ketochromin A. It is, it shows the activity at anti-HIV and antibacterial again, bacillus subtilis and staphylococcus aureus. Not only that, it shows the high cytotoxicity activity as well against the, the cancer, this cancer cell line. So the, that just change the, can, you know, the uh, culture medium, so totally different molecules uh, uh, synthesized by the uh, organism. And the, another, uh, you know, the uh, endophytic fungus that is uh, Phyllostica spinara and isolated from this plant and uh, it was also uh, grown and we were able to isolate uh, five new metabolites. So they were named, uh, you know, the, they have the different structure and uh, what we did is, uh, you know, it was like the, after isolation, the bioactivity is tested and we found that only the taurine uh, was the, you know the active against uh, cancer cell line. So and uh, uh, you know the the other compounds were not active, uh, although they have similar uh, skeleton, but only uh, activity posi uh, was uh, uh, positive activity or the bi activity shown by uh, taurine, not the other compound. And then move to move into the rhizosphere fungus I work with, and uh, you know the. Uh, so there are, uh, there are many uh, rhizosphere fungus, fungi have been isolated and uh, available and one of them is the uh, Paraspiosphoria quadriceptata and uh, uh, so the major constituent produced by this, uh, you know, the, uh, this is present, this uh, rhizosphere fungus present in, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Christmas cactus and uh, we grow this in large scale and found a production of nanoketides, that is monocylin 1. And again, it is a HSP-90 inhibitor. What we did that we had this, uh, you know, the idea, the medium can change the production of secondary metabolite. So we use the same, uh, you know, the phenomena that, that is what is called OSMAC, that is one strain, many compounds. You change the culture medium, you get different type of metabolite. So with that concept, the, you know, the fungus was grown in PDA and PDB. What we found is like, you know, the, this is the major constituent is uh, monocillin. And when growing PDB, we make, made another change. What we did actually, we, you know, the, normally we prepare this growth medium using distilled water, but we, we wanted to see that, we you know, that many metal ions change the activity of enzyme. What we did actually, we grow the fungus in the presence of the, uh, you know, the copper ion, and we found the change of the, uh, you know, if you grow the fungus in the distilled water, the major constituent is same as in the solid medium, but 
in the presence of copper ion, it is converted to uh, you know the new compound that is that was named as cytosporone A. So and not only that, so we further analyze this uh, you know the uh, the extract of uh, you know that we obtain after uh, after the growing uh, after growing with the uh, in the presence of copper ion and we found we were able to isolate new many uh, you know octaketide so from the uh, same organism that uh, that is called osmic approach you grow the uh, you know the microbes but you change the culture medium and you find that the, uh, their metabolism is changed and they produce different type of secondary metabolites so these are new derivatives that we were able to isolate you know the this uh, monosilin derivatives that were isolated after then the cyclofluorone uh, you know the derivatives the two type of skeleton produced because the enzyme activity change and then the bar synthesis is changed and these are the you know the some of the uh, cyclospro uh, uh, paraspurine uh, new compound that were isolated from same organism after changing the culture medium and also we checked the bioactivity we found that uh, you know the hydroxy monosilin and monosilin 3, 3, monosilin 1, they have the high activity, this is the positive control we use and that indicate the cyclic structure that is present in monosilin uh, is very important for the, uh, you know, the anti-cancer activity. When the ring opens, the activity get disappeared. So that was the, you know, the invention that we made that out of, uh, that, uh, you know, the isolation of this compound. And then we move to this, uh, you know, the new type of, uh, you know, the new source of natural product that is endolipinic fungus. So this is again, as I told you, like in the endophytic fungi, they, you know, the, these fungi stay in lichen thalli. So we were able to isolate many, uh, you know, the uh, fungi from, uh, you know, lichens. So what what I did actually here, so the the, I, the work with the, you know, the microbiologist and we tried to, you know, the normally work work with the isolation of secondary metabolites of endolichenic fungi. So we wanted to see whether this fungi can produce secondary metabolites or not. So therefore they were also isolated and grown in large scale. This is the first, uh, you know, the fungus that was isolated from this, uh, you know, the Usnia carbonosa lichen and they were grown in both, uh, you know, the liquid and solid medium. We found that can produce, uh, you know, uh, secondary metabolites and that also showed the wound healing activity. This is another anti-cancer activity uh, assay uh, that, to, that can be done to see whether uh, can be, you, the, you know, the can be used to develop uh, uh, anti-cancer drugs or not. So we found the crude extract has very high this is the ethyl acetate extract obtained. We wanted to look at only the small molecule. This is why we confined to the, you know, the taking only the ethyl acetate extract. We found that ethyl acetate extract of, uh, you know, that, uh, ex, uh, you know, the, that one can, that shows the very high uh, wound healing activity when compared to the po positive control use. And then the further analysis of this uh, ethyl acetate extract led to isolation of few new hepatotetai and uh, they you know the and also their activity was uh, tested and we found that uh, you know this uh, small molecule uh, showed the very high activity that was named as the hydroherberine uh, very high uh, uh, activity against wound healing assay and also that was the first, uh, you know, the report on the isolation of secondary metabolites from endolipinic fungi. This was done in 2007 and, uh, you know, the, we were able to isolate uh, two new hepatoketides with bioactivity against the anti-cancer cell lines. And then we continue that in Sri Lanka also. We know that Sri Lanka has a lot of lichens, more than 3,000 lichens already isolated and reported by this young lady, Dr. Gotami Virakon, I collaborate with her and we, we are now working with the isolation of endolithinic fungi, fungi and uh, initially I worked with two lichen, uh, three lichen species and we were able to, uh, you know, the, I, uh, 
we did the molecular identification of these fungi and, uh, just to confirm the uh, identity of the uh, you know the fungi isolated and then uh, you know we were able to confirm different type of uh, uh, fungi isolated from this lichen usnia and uh, these are some of them and then the palmotrema species many fungi were isolated and this is how the some of them are uh, the pictures of some of the fungi isolated and pseudocypheraria third lichen and uh, this is the these are the pictures of these uh, pure cultures of the uh, you know uh, fungi isolated so it's amazing that they produce different type of fungi and uh, you know in that small uh, lichen palate so when growing uh, you know uh, artificial medium and one of the uh, you know the endolichenic fungi we work with is curvularia tripoli known to produce this compound curvularin it has been studied uh, isolation of curvularin from another sub, you know the another sources not from endolichenic uh, uh, lichens but we isolated this one from endolichenic and we did not see the production of curvularin instead what we isolated is a different compound that was that shows very high uh, you know antiproliferative activity against cancer cell lines and we uh, further found you know the work with that uh, it was a new uh, novel compound uh, but with curvularin uh, you know the uh, carbon skeleton with the same carbon skeleton but not the same compound that was the main unique to that uh, you know the organism uh, it is mentioned but uh, this was identified as a novel uh, compound and uh, also it shows the antibacterial activity against these bacterial species and, uh, and, and also the, we work with another endolichenic fungi that is Penicillium uh, citrina and we, found we were able to isolate on, uh, three new compounds other than the other known compound and uh, they showed antioxidant activity. They, they were not anti-cancer -ac activity, but uh, you know the one compound uh, isolated, the novel compound isolated shows the same uh, antioxidant activity as the positive control DHT. So, and also uh, I did not work with the uh, uh, marine natural product, but we know that uh, this is another source uh, of uh, natural product that we can look into. Because we Sri Lanka, I see that uh, very, uh, uh, you know, the, we have not touched the, uh, that area. Uh, we have lots of resources, but uh, we don't, uh, only few people, I think uh, Professor Vilip De Silva from uh, University of Kalahu have done a lot of work on marine natural products, and after that, I think it's like going down. So therefore, I encourage uh, the other natural product chemists to go to this area and isolate new compounds. So this is one of the compound isolated on scene B, which has been, you know, the, it is uh, isolated uh, uh, and showed that it can be used to develop arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis drugs, uh, because uh, because it shows this, uh, you know, the interleukin eight uh, uh, antagonist activity. So therefore, the screening for bioactivity is very important. Not only plant go for microorganism that gives uh, that's uh, you know that it has lot of microorganisms produce lot of uh, you know secondary metabolites and also the di the production can not like in plant uh, uh, secondary metabolites we can change the uh, you know the behavior of fungi and change the production their uh, the production of secondary metabolites too by changing the quality medium and the changing the other parameters so that is, uh, you know, that gives you, uh, you know, the help you to I isolate a lot of novel compounds. So therefore, a lot of biases can be done uh, to see the bioactivity in the initial screening, like antioxidant activity, antimicrobial, anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, anti-inflammatory activities. So these are preliminary work that can be done. So, and also the antimicrobial activity now it's very easy, not like early days. We don't want to go for cell diffusion method. We can use the plate feeder and then, uh, you know, the using the, uh, you know, this TTC dye, uh, only the live cell turn to pink color. So we can use, we can screen 96 sample in one shot. So therefore we can go for this method. And it's, uh, you know, the, 
uh, it's time saving uh, and also we get a lot of, uh, you know, the, for the initial screening because when isolate a lot of uh, uh, compound, uh, it, if you go for the traditional method, it takes time. Therefore, uh, can be, uh, you know, the, this type, of the, the use of this microplate treater is convenient and also time serving. This is how it looks like the you know the antibacterial assay when the, the when the when you see the positive result the dead cells shows the turn to blue color and the others turn to uh, you know uh, pink color and also you can use the you know if you want to see the bioactive compound what type of compound whether one compound is bioactive or not you can use this TLC by autography assay, which is very convenient. You just run a TLC and then the, uh, you know, the, if it is antifungal, you can spray fungal with the, uh, you know, the uh, allowed to grow on the plate, TLC plate and then you can leave it for, uh, you know, the 24 hours. The following day, you can spray this, uh, uh, you know, the uh, TTC and uh, if it is inhibited, the fungal growth is inhibited or the microbial growth is inhibited, you see a big pack. It's very convenient and, uh, you know, the rapid uh, monitoring technique. And uh, there are many assays to see, uh, you know, the antioxidant activity. These, uh, I mean, I'm not going for all of them just to let you know that there are, you know, the, uh, many uh, bioassays that can be done for bi uh, to screen natural product uh, and also the anti-cancer activity. The, one of the common assay what we do is the inhibition of cancer cell line using a, that is what we call cytotoxicity assay or MTT assay. Other than that, we can see whether the specific target, if you want to identify the specific target, we can see the inhibition of HSP90 protein or whether the inhibition of the uh, uh, meta, metastatic cancer cell like <coughs> migration assay, which is what you call wound healing assay can be done. And also anti-inflammatory assay can be done using, you know, the red cell membrane stability test and also nitric oxide assay. And if these two are positive, then we can go for the, uh, you know, the monitoring of uh, inhibit, whether they inhibit cyclooxygenase 1 and 2, COX-1 and 2 uh, enzyme inhibitors. And, uh, and, and the diabetic assay, what we do normally when when do the screening, what we do the alpha amylase inhibition and alpha uh, glucosidase inhibition assays. And also, not the when develop medicine, we think that the drugs is not the only uh, possibility. But you know the nowadays, many pe people concern, you know, the, they are very concerned about the cosmetic they use and they like if it is developed from natural product. This is what we call cosmeceuticals. And uh, so the development of cosmeceuticals, uh, also natural products is like, you know, has great demand now. So I'll just brief very quickly what type of cosmetic and what are the things that we have to look into, uh, you know, when develop cosmeceuticals. Uh, so mainly three categories, uh, you know, the cosmetics developed for skincare products, hair care product and also body shape. So if when when you have to develop cosmeceuticals, right, that means cosmetics with medicinal value. This is why they are called cosmeceuticals. So we take crude extract and also we do the screening test and again we have to do, uh, we, we go for these three categories. These are the main categories that we look into. And again, when you want to do the initial screening, we have to look at a simple method, fast method, and also uh, cost-effective method. These are the three factors that you have to look into. And uh, also, one of the, uh, you know, the, in the cosmetic industry, when develop cosmeceutical, aging, uh, you know, the, the development of, uh, you know, the, to control aging is one of them, right? So what? factors affect on the aging is, the, you know, the, so there are, it, it could be due to photo aging, exposed to sunlight, and also, uh, you know, the acne, and also melanin formation, and wrinkle formation. So these, these are the things that we need to look at when screen uh, natural product to develop, uh, you know, the cosmeceuticals. And, and also, uh, you know, the uh, one of the, uh, when, when you screen the uh, natural products,
for uh, you know the development of cosmeceutical we know that there's great demand for fairness screen what we looked at we looked at the inhibition of tyrosinase enzyme so uh, what we you know the, we do the in the laboratory what we do is we look, go for I mean, we shape the enzyme and we shape the uh, substrate dopa and we see whether enzyme is inhibited or not so uh, that is the preliminary test that you could do in the laboratory if we want to develop uh, you know the uh, piano screen so then we can go for the development stage this is one thing and the, and also the when develop hair care product so uh, some of things that we do is whether the the natural product can promote the hair growth and also uh, we know that anti hair or the hair falling is another problem and also uh, maintain the hair oily hair dry hair and also uh, anti dandruff this is anti microbial acid so the specific uh, uh, you know the uh, fungus it's a fun anti dandruff is uh, is against anti fungal uh, the fungi that cause this uh, dandruff so therefore we if we can find the uh, inhibitors for that fungi growth of that fungi so that can be used for anti dandruff and also how do you, what what are the tests that we can do uh, in order when looked at the uh, uh, development of hair care product one of them is the hair follicle length determination there we know that the hair has lot of cysteine amino acid therefore what what we can do is if the if we have facilities we can see the uptake of the, you know the S35 cysteine that is one of the tests test that to look at uh, you know the cysteine uptake assay and also cell proliferation method so you grow the cell lines and see the uh, enhancement of cell proliferation to see the uh, whether that increase the hair growth and also uh, gene expression protein production and the other one of the enzyme which is responsible for uh, hair falling is 5 alpha reductase that is testosterone converted to uh, dehydrotestosterone in the presence of uh, you know the enzyme that kill the uh, you know uh, hair follicle dht that kill the hair follicle therefore when develop hair growth promoters what we looked at is the inhibitors of the enzyme so that's a, another aspect that we could look at when work with natural product and antimicrobial test to develop anti dandruff and also of course once they are uh, uh, you know the, if you get promising results then you can go for animal testing and uh, you know the body shape so the this is another thing that the natural when develop cosmeceuticals uh, you know the natural products are really important uh, to uh, maintain the body shape especially the obesity is a uh, you know the one of the problem in among you know the ladies and uh, so the because of the formation of cellulite so the cellulite uh, can be uh, you know that is the triglycerides that they are formed under the skin if there is anything that you know the inhibit or the formation of this triglyceride can be developed as anti obesity drug so uh, we know that this garcinia cambogia you know singhala we call goraka that is used to prepare anti slimming agent why because of this hydro uh, you know the hydroxytric acid mm -hmm. what happened so this this compound can inhibit uh, you know the isocitrate lyase enzyme which is a uh, enzyme in the citric acid cycle which decrease the metabolism and then uh, you know decrease the uh, obesity so therefore that this is available in the market also we can see the similar compound whether available or not and therefore the to wind up my uh, you know the uh, uh, the 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 speak that i like to say that the the sources of uh, novel natural products are really important this is one of the target that we should do because we know that uh, where will now natural products skeleton come for in the future We, this is what we had looked at we know that there is a great demand for uh, development of new drugs with new carbon skeleton and therefore the novel compounds should be uh, isolated and identified but you know the we know that the if we can go down the genetic information that you know the 
that tells you lot of information. Therefore, we have to work with, uh, you know, my uh, molecular biologist as well. Now the time has come to, uh, you know, the strength and the collaboration work along. You know, they won't get a uh, lot of good results if you work with other, uh, you know, the disciplines. Is the multidisciplinary research is highly encouraged uh, if we want to uh, make successful drugs, uh, you know, strengthen this uh, drug uh, success, uh, drug discovery program. Uh, you know, and also we know that the, most of the time natural product chemists are highly criticized saying that they don't do anything to the society. But if you go back to this, uh, you know, the history, right, is the most of the, you know, the drugs uh, that are available in the market, it's like half of them, either the carbon skeleton and the, uh, you know, the, the structure, they are given from a natural product. The idea is taken from natural product. So this is how these, uh, you know, the uh, novel structures are converted to the lead compounds and then developed uh, in the drug discovery. Therefore, it is high time to uh, discuss how these problems, we, there are a lot of challenges to develop, uh, you know, natural product drugs. Especially, we do the research in the laboratory scale, but when it comes to the commercial scale, you know, there's a big gap between that. Laboratory scale and the uh, commercial scale. So we have to fill the gap between those two. The only way I see it, we have to work with, uh, you know, uh, uh, other uh, the researchers in the other discipline and also, uh, you know, the pharmaceutical industry. Very close co collaboration is very important. Giving that toast, I, I, you know, I hope I, you know, gave you a strong idea about why natural products are very important and now time has come to, uh, you know, the identify new uh, compound, bioactive compound with new carbon skeleton and, and also uh, develop uh, drugs and strengthen the drug discovery program in the world, not only in Sri Lanka. Thank you very much for your kind attention.